folks. Welcome to the Sloppy Boys, where we take a deep dive into the drinks that you love. I'm Jeff Dutton, along with Mike Hanford. Hi. And Tim Kalpakis. What is up? And we're your host, the Sloppy Boys Band, hitting the road very soon and live streaming, live streaming even sooner than that. <laughs> <laughs> now, elaborate, Jeff. Those are interesting things. Those are those are some expensive words that you just used. Uh, live stream, tour. Yes, I, yes. I need them unpacked. Yeah, you do? Yeah, what's what what does that all mean, Jeff? What, are there stops on this tour or is it just a general? Well, <laughs> let's go let's talk live <laughs> let's talk <laughs> It's kind of roving. You you stand outside in the band <laughs> It's all just sort of swirling. <laughs> sort of a parade. No, let's talk live <laughs> let's talk the live stream first. Yeah. Because it's tonight. Uh, this this episode is dropping. Yeah. That's right. The twelfth, April twelfth, is it not? That's exciting. 6 p.m. L.A. time, 9 p.m. Eastern, and everywhere in between, in between. <laughs> you probably have heard a million different things, <laughs> positive things, about blood, sweat, and beers, or how the Sloppy Boys made an album on a farm in West Texas. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard wonderful things. It's on the popcorn list on Letterboxd. Uh, I think yes, I heard it was, uh, yeah. it, it won the audience award at the El Paso Film Festival, and the director won uh, El Paso Filmmaker of the Year. Mm -hmm, I heard of that the too. the year. I mean, what is it really? It's a documentary of us making our fourth album, Sonic Ranch, mm -hmm. with Money Mark. You're going to see yep. technical proficiency at times from other people, and you're going to see a lot of fun, funny stuff. <laughs> this movie will soon be, uh, you know, uh, the whole world is going to get at their mitts on it, and it's going to feel like, oh, I, we, I lost the Sloppy Boys to the mainstream movie viewers, but we mm -hmm. wanted to do this watch party for the slop heads, this is a, it's a VIP sneak peek type of a thing. So you're going to get to see it first before distribution happens for this film. Man, nice. the slops are going to be there. We're going to intro it. We're going to take questions after. And if you're on Discord, we can see your, your chats and we can say, yeah, that was actually pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> we took note of that. Hey, Jeff, I'll do you one better. Um, mm -hmm. if, if someone thinks this sounds so fun, but maybe they're listening to this podcast a, a few days late, or maybe they're, they're busy tonight. They, the, the, this live stream is going to be available for a week, right? If you buy the ticket, it's 10 bucks. And then yeah. you, you don't have to watch it live. You could watch it for, a, a, is it a week or, or longer? I think let's call it a week. Yeah. Let's at least a week. week. And then here's the other thing. If you're one of those intrepid slop heads that stumbled upon the link, <laughs> And just plop down the 10 bucks, not even knowing that you- Thank could, you, first of all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, first of all. Not even knowing that you were <laughs> available for the date, your ticket still applies, dude. Right, right, right. That ticket's still good. Will they hear the, or, or uh, uh, see and hear the Q&A afterwards too? Yes, it's all part yes. of the stream. It's, it's, it's all, all happening right. on the watch party. <laughs> I uh, this is great, and we said, and we're not going to be talking during. We're not chatting during. No, because it's 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 a pre premiere viewing viewing. It's not chat, and yeah. you at home when you're watching, don't chat <laughs> with your friends. <laughs> Silence. Silence. And audience. <laughs> let's say you are uh, among the lucky people who live in Philadelphia or New York. You're mm. also going to get screenings uh -oh. where we come and screen the film live. Here's what's great about Philadelphia. On um, Saturday, May 25th, mm. we're screening the film and then we're playing a live music show. And um, th that screening sold out, but you can still buy tickets to come to the music portion of the night. And then if you're grumpy that you missed out on the movie, we added a matinee on Sunday afternoon so you can still see the movie. This is what's so cool. That That's is very cool. Super cool. I and mm -hmm. New York City. Oh, yes. Can we, is we that got confirmed? news for you. Yeah, New York, we're coming. <laughs> we're coming to you May 9th. Chelsea Music Hall. For a screening of the Sloppy Boys Blood, Sweat, and uh, what is the full, uh, Jeff, say that full title again. Oh, God. Blood, Sweat, and Beers, <laughs> or how the Sloppy Boys made an album on a farm in West Texas. Whew. Whew. Uh, yeah. Be there for that. We're screening that. Q&A afterwards. And then the next day, Littlefield in Brooklyn were playing two sets. Whew. Now, that's a full show. 
Now, Mike, when you say now two sets, I'm show. like, oh, two separate shows, two ticketed. No, he means yeah. much like the Grateful Dead or Fish, we're playing two big fat sets in that show. Mm -hmm. Not to mm -hmm. be confused with some of these other cities where we sold out so fast, we had to add second shows. I'm talking Chicago. I'm talking Milwaukee. They couldn't handle these venues. They're like, yeah, Sloppy Boys, we can handle you. We, we, we can handle you. No, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. sell too many tickets. We can handle you. Yeah, we should have known when the, we were asking those guys. And they're like, yeah. I think we can. Sweating. <laughs> These people were f sweating. It was, it was like we're, we're in touch with like, it's just like a, some kid in his bedroom. Like, yeah, I booked this venue. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To recap, here are the dates coming at you. April 12th, today, the sloppyboys.com documentary watch party. <sighs> April 25th and 26th, Chicago Beat Kitchen. April 27th, Milwaukee at the Cactus Club. There's a 5 p.m. show and an 8 p.m. show. Then we take a little break for a week. Back on the road, May 9th, New York, Chelsea Music Hall, the documentary screening. <laughs> screening. <laughs> Jeez. We're screening it somewhere. This is supposed to be a nice, tight presentation. I know, I know, I know. May 10th, Brooklyn, we're playing that Littlefield show. May 11th, Westerly, Rhode Island, we're playing United Theater. That's with Big Grande. May 24th, um, Pittsburgh, we're playing Bottle Rocket. May 25th, Philadelphia. Philomoka documentary screening and live show. And like we said, the 26th, the day after Sunday, we got that documentary screening matinee folks get those tickets. I'm going to, we're going to get off the tour talk and stuff in just a second, but I want to say the, the guy who runs bottle rock in Pittsburgh, great little venue. I can't wait to play there. He said he got the, he asked us if we wanted to play because somebody in the supermarket called to him like down the aisle was like, Hey, you should book the sloppy boys. Whoa. <laughs> The town wants it. Damn, that's a cool. I think, I think we're doing two sets there, too. There's no opener there, either. We're going right into it. Right into it. A full night of just the slops. I mm. like playing these big, mm. fat sets. Mm. We're learning more of our own songs, which is a funny thing to have to <laughs> do, which is we're, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. it's, we put it off for too long. <laughs> well, it's rather sophisticated music. <laughs> it's some of it is. Yeah, but some it of it is. is more than three instruments on it so you need more people and for folks that have still are that are like i have seen the sloppy boys i know the 20-ish songs they play oh yeah we might have three <laughs> more new ones for you <laughs> we might have two new ones <laughs> no don't say that Jim. they're all all new songs <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're playing every album in a row <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool guys at some point oh like when we hit the 10 year anniversary of lifelong vacation, we do a tour where we're just playing that album beginning to end the mm. masterpiece. That'll be the very masterpiece. fun. Next year, then do uh, uh dancing on the wind next year. Par parodies. Yeah. It's funny. Cause it would be yeah, three years in a row. <laughs> playing lifelong would be a really funny, like 28 minute show. And then <laughs> <laughs> we just get out of there. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> we just play it again. <laughs> We should play, yeah, we should play it in order and then play it back. We don't even have to get out of the van. We just roll by. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we get into a little booze news? Mm, yes. Beep, 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 booze news, hit it. When the episode is a few minutes in and they run out of chit-chat, the trick of the day is on the way, but it's not time for that. Don't go anywhere, because there's a segment just for you. Where Tim will pip your ignorance away. Here comes booze news. Oh, I like it. When you hear all about the news you were without, edited by a one time Emmy nominee. <laughs> on the show that has timeless integrity. <laughs> wow. Wow. Flamin' Booze was sent to us by Chris Finky. Stinky Finky. Finky's done some good work. Oh my God, he's one of the big boys out there. And if you have a booze <laughs> news team, email it to the Sloppy Boys Podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. And if you want to be friends with Stinky Finky, subscribe to patreon.com slash the Sloppy Boys and you oh, can man. hear our other podcasts and, and you can connect with Slophead. It's just a nickname. He's not Stinky. God, I, I just <laughs> hope stinky. that one day somebody says to refers to me that way. He's one of the big boys out there. <laughs> <laughs> big boys. Stinky Jeff is one boys. of the big boys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you guys recognize that melody? Flaming no. Bows, right? Flaming oh, Bows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had, we had put the word out that we wanted a a Cheers style. No, we wanted a Cheers style photo of, or opening with our faces in it or something. 
Mm. Either way, we got a we got a still. Yeah, we, that's, we didn't ask for a still though, did we? The ghost of Craig T. Robinson doing great work, but I want a video. Mm-hmm. Craig T. Like, Nelson. Cheers. What did I say? Craig T. Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> T, T. <laughs> That'd be so funny if Craig Robinson was making uh, Photoshop for yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, weird. He's just he's, he's just looking like, at Photoshop. He's a TV star. He does tours his comedy, but damn, he just does a little Photoshop <laughs> he puts for aside us. A little time to do a little Photoshop. <laughs> I always keep time for a little Photoshop. We had a Cheers parody uh, a couple weeks ago from Lamont to Bob in our Daiquiri episode. Now we had a Flaming Moe's parody. Very good. This is very, very good. This is good. This mm. is good stuff. Mm-hmm. And we probably won't get busted for copyright on YouTube. That's good. Mm. Love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good for the show. Very. Keeps the show moving. And speaking of keeping the show moving, what's the actual booze news? Nice. Okay. Here's some booze news. We mm-hmm. are, it's spring. Am I wrong? It's, well, it's sprung. Spring is beginning to sprung. <laughs> Wait, is you know what they should do? We should call spring spring and summer sprung. I think that would be funny. Sprung. The past yeah. tense. That would be funny. And winter, call it fell. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're not with you on that one. That's that would be one funny. step too far. <laughs> anyway, I'm tracking some drink trends and some new drinks, and uh, we'll see what takes hold in the spring and then blooms in the summer. But um, there, here's a new drink that uh, was viral uh, that I wanted to see if you guys heard about it. Nice. The Bromosa. You've heard? No. No. But can I guess? It's a mimosa with like a bro vibe to it? Yes. Nice. Ooh. Hanford, you still got it. Mike, you're really good at, with etymology of terms. That's right. Mm. Cont- and context clues. Okay, so we're yes. on a booze oh. podcast. It's All booze right. news. Tim's not going to be talking about something not booze, booze related. <laughs> then, oh, Jeff, really then I start to think, okay, I've heard half of this word before. Right. It's a drink. Yeah. Then I start thinking about the word. <laughs> then I retired Bro. to my study. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I put my smoking jacket on. <laughs> No. Well, puff, puff. Mike, you, you look so. I, 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 Ooh. I believe everything you say with all those books behind you. I know. I'm in my. I'm in my brother's office. I'm in my brother's house. I'm in his office. He's got books everywhere. He's an English teacher. I'm prone to believe you. Also, you can probably tell if people are watching the video. I keep coming out of it. My microphone is is duct taped to a hockey stick. Okay, so I Let's can't see move it. it. <laughs> I, I can't see there. Can That's see good. It? I don't even know. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't want to bring my thing, my whole thing up. Other than the, go ahead. the The books on the shelf are they? Is that like literature or are those Don Cherry Rock'em Sock'em hockey books as well? That's interesting. Too we got we do. I first one I said or picked up hockey tough. Nice. <laughs> Win, a winning mental game. Four by Mark Messier. Not bad. Oh, but then we've good. also got, you know, uh, let's see here. You got any old far sides in there? No, Confederacy of Dunces. I'm seeing Blue Highways, A Journey into America. Okay. Ooh. I actually what read Confederacy of Dunces, by the, the way. Brothers K. Oh, Gentlemen in Moscow. These are, these are big books here. All right. Can we hear about the Bromosa, please? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. The Bromosa. <laughs> 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 well, you didn't like what I was uh, looking, <laughs> pointing away from the microphone talking. <laughs> Parsing through books. <laughs> See, I guess we're bad, but don't worry about that. The Bromosa. I, I brought a clip. Here is a TikTok from TikToker Morgan Middendorf, and she's out on a golf course. And here's what she has to say. Okay, I've got a golf course drink of the day. It is called a Bromosa. She a cup, and any light beer will work. Mm. So we're gonna fill about. It's a Coors Light. Here with Coors Light. Just a little bit of OJ. Now this is the perfect drink to start your round of golf, and then a shot of vodka. Shot of vodka. Tito's she uses. Tito's she uses. Is that it? That's it. I I was waiting for it's booze. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That's it. We're talking a beer with a splash of OJ and a shot of vodka. Um, 
I do like the idea of this shot of vodka because it, when when you always if you have just a brass monkey or or a mimosa, when yeah, you have that's like what it is. Alcohol that's diluted, you're you're then you're getting diluted. But if you put that vodka in there, then you're goosing it back up for us. Uh-huh. A quick goose could be good. Could be very good. I would try it. I would try it. Hey, I think you know what? They're just trying to make it happen with that catchy name, though. I don't like that barstool sports shit. Romosa. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I, I uh, so will I'll be out for the next episode. I'll be with you guys, right? I only want to be with you. I'll be. We will be in the same room. I have a little bit of a an idea for a drink. Okay. Do we go golfing and we have with bromosas? That's a good idea. That's even better than my idea. <laughs> no, but I have an idea for a drink that I want to. <laughs> my I wanna, idea sucks. I want to show you guys. I want to bring the ingredients and reveal what it is. A big reveal. Oh. But it's going to depend on if I can get the ingredients. A big reveal live on the pod. One might be difficult to get. Oh. And guess what? Mm. It's only two ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> do it okay do it okay mike wow us fuck do put this. up or shut right. up i can do it you guys hear a dog we got a dog back here oh yeah what can What's you hear his name barker <laughs> yeah i believe you believe i can her name's gracie she's a beautiful dog just beautiful only i mean born in october i think young dog you're talking to the two wrong guys, Mike. Oof, not me. You're t- I'm talking to the right guy for me. <laughs> we don't give a fuck. But I just came up with a good dog name. I was joking. I said, uh, what's her name? Barker. But then I was like, Barker is a name. That's a good name for a dog. Barker. Yeah, yeah. We, I had a family friend. Of, um, no, they did have Barker was the name of the dog. I thought uh, it was Barkley. It or was a Barker. Pop punk drummer. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good name for them. A good name. When it you're is. naming your drummer, keep that in mind. <laughs> How do we name you, Jeff? <laughs> you came out of that uh, gooey egg, and we said, "We gotta give this guy a name." <laughs> <laughs> drummer name books. <laughs> gooey egg. egg. <laughs> like, ugh. Where, did, where, did we get, where did we get that egg? Now? Why did it come to us? <laughs> yeah, it was a, some sort of a mystical traveler. Was like, could you hold on to my egg until it's ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he course. never came back for me, huh? No, nope. damn. Still waiting for that traveler, and I'm glad he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that traveler's dead long dead. <laughs> I hope that traveler's dead. All right, is that it for booze news? Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will notice too, I'm sitting in a, a desk chair, so you'll notice I'll be doing this a lot. My hands are sort of mm, right here. The index fingers up pursing your lips a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's just I don't usually have uh You can't do that on the coffee right table, up. can you? No, I can't. Hmm. I feel like a real hmm. kind of office guy. Hmm. The office politics hmm. in here are tough. All right. Uh, well, yeah, watch out news for behind uh, us. Oh, okay. Hold on. I was going to do a good joke. I was going to say, watch out for um, Jim from accounting. I shouldn't say Jim because that makes you think of uh, Halper, but uh, Don from accounting. Uh, well, that, you know how there was Don every, is every Jim improv from show you. Yeah. Yes, every improv show you've ever seen in your life, there's an office scene, and the improviser on stage has never worked a fucking job in their life. Mm. So they're always like, "Oh, uh, Roger from accounting," and you're like, "Just you know, from accounting, fuck off." Uh, Ian Roberts had a thing because people would come in and be like, "Oh, the Johnson file." And he was like, "All right, there is no Johnson file. There's never been a Johnson file. But that's just <laughs> office talk." Like you're saying that you've never experienced and it just sounds like office talk. Mm-hmm. And it's embarrassing to just like know when to see some 22 year old like just look, uh, it's rough to work in a cubicle and have a corporate job. But I want to hear that from someone who has done it. I hate this like built in malaise that people are like, oh, a dead end corporate job because I hear it from a lot of unemployed kids or a lot of trust fund kids. And I'm like, yeah, any work in a job. You should work a job. <laughs> you know, okay. Yeah, I, I was surprised how many people, like, when we were at UCB, we were all working in office jobs during the yes. day and then doing UCB at night. And then we've, you've come to find out a lot of these people are just like, yeah, I auditioned. That's what I do. That's my job. Yeah, yeah, right, like, right. So, so you're just kind of chilling, huh? <laughs> you audition, but you don't book. But you, but you don't book. <laughs> you Imagine know, saying to that to book. an actor, how, how rude that is. Now, you mentioned audition, but I didn't see a book. <laughs> you audition, <laughs> but the guy who booked audition, too, didn't he? <laughs> he was a little bit better. And that wasn't you, was it? Mm. Yeah. 
Oh god, that's a good way to be. We should start acting like that. <laughs> like fucking asshole. <laughs> In all aspects, I go to Subway sandwiches. I'll have the uh, ham and uh, <laughs> put the provolone on it. <laughs> so what are you trying to? It's so yeah. weird. He's got cheese. <laughs> All right. Well, enough about cheese. I want to hear about the drink of the day. Oh, Jefferson, this is a good one. The drink of the day is the batanga. You've heard? Not batanga. heard or had. Sounds Not like heard, a, Mike. Well, I've heard from you. Yeah, I've heard from you on the text chain, of course. I've been to the Tonga Hut. Did it appear in Booze News, Tim? Is it possible? <laughs> it appeared in Booze News, and I would like to hear from my two co-hosts what what this is, because I I I I'm bust my ass being the editor in chief of Booze News every week. I got it. I know uh, what it is. I know what it is. Yes. We made a whole a, thing this, about it. It was a TikTok yeah. trip. A TikTok. And it's it's and it's, it's sweeping the nation, and we have got to get our hands on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very similar to the uh, the Bromosa. Yeah. yeah, and you know we gotta yes. get our hands on these. We gotta learn about it. Everybody's finding out what it is. We gotta find out. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, this was only like three we weeks in ago. There. And it was yes. interesting. There's a wrinkle. Tim, come on. Let us get in there. Let's root around. Let's let us do that, Tim. <laughs> I remember, okay. Tim. I remember. It's because people started ordering a fancy drink called a batanga. And it's what is it essentially? It's essentially a Cuba Libre with tequila instead of rum. Yeah. And all and all the bartenders saying were like, Yeah, batanga, batanga. Here's your here's your, you know, seventeen dollar batanga. And then somebody else could like saunter up the bar and say, uh, right. tequila coke, please. And mm -hmm. you get the same drink. How about that? This mm -hmm. absolutely. This was Six a meme bucks. I talked about. This this was an online <laughs> attitude. But do you remember this this the swindle of it all? The the the, the Batanga week, uh the year of the Batanga. Not ringing any bells? Ah yes. Yep. The the influencers, the TikTok influencers. <laughs> that's, that's all I needed. <laughs> but what about need. them? What happened with them? They tried, they said they went down to this, uh, they went yes. down to South America, Central America, is some might even think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, where Mexico is. Where did, North, was it Mexico? North America, the, the southern yes. part of North America. Okay. Hmm. And they went there and were going to this big liquor company and they said, uh, they said, hey, we want you guys to drink this stuff and talk about it. And they said, okay, we'll talk about it, but we're going to make up a fake drink. So close, but I'll take oh, it. You fuck. guys listen. You you listen good enough to make me feel like uh, respected. Heard. Yes, I, but I, I will say, seen. Tim. A lot of the time, I, I just just so you know, a lot of the time when you talk, I just hear. Just so you know, just so you know, when you talk, it's like a flaming lips song. that's like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and, 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 I think it's called and, and, the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah song. <laughs> There's also a Beyonce song, Yeah, Yeah. Ah, which we discussed on the uh, blowout the earlier. Blowout. Yes, yeah, so I got to subscribe because that show. show's good. It's better than this oh. show. Yeah. yeah, it's way better. Um. Anyway, yes, it's basically that. It was that uh, I'm sitting at home minding my own business, and this is in like February. Suddenly... The Batanga, Batanga. I see, I see an, uh, like a cocktail guy on Instagram being like, Hey, everyone, I was just in Mexico. Everyone's drinking the Batanga. It, it is a real drink, by the way. It was, it wasn't a fake drink, but everybody's drinking the Batanga. It's a uh, tequila and Coke with lime and salt. And you mix it up with the knife that you cut the lime with. You got to try it. I think it's going to be the drink of the year. And then right. I said, Oh. And then yeah, I yeah. saw another guy say almost the exact same thing. And then slopheads were tagging me. It's it's going across Twitter, YouTube, TikTok. Everyone is hitting way too hard with this batanga. And Tim, we're it's being a programmed, suspicious. dude. Yes. Yeah, that's us, dude. And then the truth comes out. Eventually, one of these um, TikTokers uh, lets the cat out of the bag and says, guys, here's what happened. A, a tequila brand invited us all down bunch of different influencers down to tour a tequila distillery. And then that night we were partying at a bar and having fun and drinking Batangas. Uh, and we all said, Hey, these are great, but they're not big in America. What if we get it going? What if when we all get home, we all make videos about it. And what if we see if we could start a trend and it was, uh, they kind of did it. And 
we on booze news were like, well, that's it's it's interesting. We're we're, get, we're clowning on drink of the summer culture that it's become post mm-hmm. spritz, post white claw, post dirty Shirley. We now live in a world that's so hungry for drink of the summer talk yeah. that you can the, fake it. That they can manufacture it. Isn't that fucked up? It's so fucked. We should pick up what we think the drink of the summer is going to be before the summer. Oh, like a... Like make it an yeah. official, like this is the pick that the prediction? Sloppy Boys picked. Yeah. Yeah, prediction. The pick, pick, pick diction. The pick prediction. <laughs> the big pick prediction. Yeah, folks, next episode, we're going to be making our big <laughs> pick prediction. Three little Nostradamuses. <laughs> Three little Nostradami. <laughs> yeah, that's what the episode is going to be called. Okay, somebody put us in cloaks looking at a crystal ball and we're coming up with <laughs> 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 predictor. Prediction. Hey, I'll tell you what, it's not out of, I, I have never had a batanga, but it's not out of a question that uh it will be the drink of summer because even though it was through this kind of scammy, uh pranky method, it did make suddenly every cocktail person in the world is thinking about this drink that had been otherwise pretty uh not a thing here in America. Also, uh, the fact that you know they came out and said it was a it was a a fake a setup. Not a lot of people I th- would like be paying attention to this story and go, oh, it was fake. Oh, okay, I don't know. They just they're, they exactly. hear whatever they hear. Oh, I think only a small fraction of the people heard this. Uh, the cat get out of the bag there. Um, yeah, yeah. And so they're still walking around fooled. They got their head in the clouds. Uh, yeah, they got that fucking head up the head. Sheeple. Sheeple, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But this drink before the that's why we're talking about it now. But uh it is a drink, it does exist, and it was invented in 1961 in Tequila, Mexico. How appropriate. I didn't know there was a tequila Mexico. I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you. I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> I believe that there's like five counties in Mexico where if you make an agave spirit, that you can call it tequila. Otherwise, it's yeah. not that. Like champagne, the, uh, champagne that's rules. The Cuervo guy no, told us. Mezcal. Oh. Yes. I don't, rem- I don't remember a lick of what he said. That was a wild night. Hey, well, he got <laughs> us drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On each level of Jose Cuervo. <laughs> No, he, he he supplied chips, though, to line our stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we we a, a basket of chips and salsa. <laughs> and we had seven shots of tequila. By the time we got to the fancy stuff, we couldn't taste. Yeah. And that fancy stuff is good. The Reserva is like thick, oh, dark oh, syrup. The Familia de Reserva, yeah. yes. Tim, anyway. Tim, go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned it's, it's invented when? 1961, Tequila, Mexico, there's a bar called La Capilla, the chapel, and there was a a bar owner named Don Javier Delgado Corona. And um, basically what we got here, guys, because it's the the, the tequila, salt, and lime, it's a Paloma, but we're swapping out the soft drink. Instead of squirt, it's Coca-Cola. Oh! Um, And this, uh, the name of the drink, this was a funny story. I, I was able to find a YouTube video of Don Javier himself telling the history and making one for the cameras. He has since passed away, but there's a good YouTube video if you want to check it out. Um, he said the name Batanga came from he like making fun of his fat friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> the the uh, Batanga, the word Batanga is Filipino for little canoe. And Ooh. so I guess this uh, this kid went this Filipino guy maybe when when he was a chubby kid his friends made fun of him and called him Batanga because he looked like a little canoe or something, um, and then uh, <laughs> cut to adulthood he's pretty much his name's Batanga now everybody calls him Batanga and um, Don Julio likes him the dude hangs around the bar and there's one day Don Julio he wants to go buy more highball glasses the tall thin Collins kind. But Mm. the only thing that he can find at the store are slightly wider, slightly rounder Mm. glasses. So he he said he made a joke and he said, yeah, they look like Batanga because they're fat (laughs) because they're fatter and rounder and wider. He could could give this Batanga guy a break. (laughs) (laughs) Batanga's crying in the corner. A life of pain, this poor guy. (laughs) For all we know, Batanga was was honored by this because he did. He liked this nickname. So um, but uh, yeah, so then from that point forward, Don Javier was using 
those glasses and that name for his tequila Cokes. And here is the recipe. We're free from the shackles of the IBA list. So oh, we got this God. from the Difford's Guide, another very respectable go-to source. Um, and then I also watched Don Javier make one. So there's, there's little tweaks here. But here's the Difford's Guide recipe. You ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. Three and a half ounces Coca-Cola. Mexican glass bottle if you got it. Cane okay. sugar, not high fructose. Mm -hmm. Damn. The lesser of the Coca-Colas, I think, but. <laughs> you like regular Coke better than Mexico. You're the only person that has ever said I know. this. I know. I know. Two ounces Blanco tequila. Don Javier uses El uh, Tequiliano tequila, but you can use any Blanco tequila. Um, then half ounce. I got Patron nips, the little ones. Oh, fancy. They, they're um, funny. It's like the Patron bottle with like a little cork thing. on it. Oh, those are fun. Now, you might find that that nip is probably 50 milliliters, whereas two ounces is 60 milliliters. Mm. Mm. Adjust accordingly, uh, Michael. That's why I got two a little extra. Now, Don Javier uses a shitload of tequila, actually. He fills it up almost like half the way with te more than half the way with tequila and a splash. Um, yeah, he's going to get drunk if he does that. That's the idea, Mike. Half ounce of fresh lime juice. Don Javier squeezes half a lime straight into the glass. And then one pinch salt. This recipe says to put the salt in there, but Don Javier, he puts the, he rims the glass with it. Here's the method. Stir salt with lime juice in base of glass to dissolve. Add mm -hmm. ice and other ingredients and briefly stir. A brief. Now, okay, so wait a minute. Are we doing, are we doing the salt rim? You can if you want, right? Or, or is that just Don Julio's thing? I think I might put it right in there. I think I might do Difford's. Yeah, I'm a Difford's guy. Also, I don't like the idea of having all that shit on the bottom because it never stirs throughout. It never does. <laughs> um, it, 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 but here's the thing, Jay. The iconic <laughs> what? important thing about the Batanga that was mentioned in all these TikToks and uh -oh. that Don Javier makes a point of is you take the knife that you use to slice the limes you dunk it in the glass at the end and you stir it around. Mm -hmm. That's what you're missing, Jeff. You Jeff, never stirred it Don't around. Don't lecture me, Mike. You, you never stirred it around. <laughs> Mike with the wall of books behind him. Fuck off. You're not smart enough to know that you need to stir the whole thing. It's bad luck to stir with a knife. I say tisk, tisk, <gasps> tisk. Interesting. That's what they say, I think. Seven years bad luck. But we'll do it for the sake of the pod. Okay. You guys want to make these drinks? I would love to. Yeah. All, All right. right. See you soon. Folks, we'll be right back after this. Bye. And we're back. Batangas in hand. Let's see him. Batangas Pretty classic. Out. Look, I just put mine in a pint. Oh, that's nice. Mm. I didn't get a great yield off that Difford's recipe. Yeah, I didn't fill my glass, but I wanted to, I didn't want to put too much Coke because I, I don't think there's supposed to be too much Coke. It's supposed to be a stiff drink. Now, did you rim, did you rim your glass? No, I put my pinch right in there. Yeah, I did a pinch. Yeah, I, I, I was going to rim it. And I said, my lips are chapped. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dry. Um, I did hear <clears throat> that the salt is necessary that, uh, you know, um, the recipe even said two pinches on one that I saw. And then, um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So here we go. Sips. Yes. Yeah. Sips. Oh, mm. now that's, that's okay. I, mm -hmm. I maybe went heavy on the salt. I'm tasting. Salt. I think so too. It's like drinking seawater. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, it didn't seem like I went heavy on the salt. Maybe, but like, Salt in a Coke is maybe that's it just magnifies or something. A nice brine. Yeah, it's a brine. That's a good bullet. It's a mm. brine, baby. I like that it's it tastes complicated. Um, you know, like the, the Coke and tequila yeah. mix is like an interesting thing as opposed to a Paloma that just like tastes grapefruity. This is uh, it's it's tastes fancy. It does. And I'm a guy who spent a lot of time with a Cuba Libre thanks to this pod. Right, right, right. Um, like did you ever think, did you ever think like, ooh, did salt ever enter your brain when you were? Mike, it, it never, it never entered my brain, nor did um, tequila. Just switching yeah, up the spirit. Right, right. 
Never word of a curry because to uh, uh, Cuba Libre is rum and coke. Yep, that's your standard rum mm-hmm. and coke. And what makes it the Cuba Libre was the lime. Is that what we said? Well, like, like lots of the, lime, lots of lime. Yeah, lime. yeah, yeah. It's the extra step. It's funny though that just like swapping a spirit makes makes us think like you're not supposed to do that. It's like you grow up hearing of a whiskey coke. Yes, you grow up Jack mm-hmm. and Coke. You grow up hearing about a rum and coke. Absolutely. And then only recently did I hear of a vodka and Coke. And I was like, can you do that? Yeah. And of course you can do it. And it's a popular drink. You a can. Vodka diet, especially. Hey, how about that? V- that vanilla vodka would be good in uh, Coke. Ooh. Or vanilla Coke and vodka. Or vanilla vodka, vanilla Coke. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. Do much. Well, but we're looking for uses for that vanilla absolute. That's pretty perfect. Mm-hmm. That's your round two, Mike. You, it's dude, funny. I'm, you not, it's, I'm not in my home. I'm not in my ah. home. <laughs> I should always travel with my bottle of absolute vanilla. It's funny. Just this, just the tinge of tequila in this does taste more like a oh boy, like this is a nasty boy drink. This is a party drink. It's because the, the taste of tequila always trips my brain into Uh-oh. it's going <laughs> to be one gonna of be, these uh, nights. This is going to be Mike talks loud to people tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what I thought about a maestro? I thought it was great. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you haven't heard my maestro rant? Oof. This is supposed to be an afternoon drink, by the way. It's a daytime after because it's a high ball. That makes what? sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like mixing mixing like sugary Coke with, you know, your upper tequila. This is a party drink. Uh, so I guess daytime yeah. does make sense as far daytime as Daytime like, at a pool party. Yeah, but... I don't know, man. Dangerous tequila during the day. Come on. I think oh, it's well, a bluesy yeah, day. I think course. Don Javier <laughs> fills it up past the halfway point with tequila and just puts a splash of Coke. I think this is for a it's a darty instead of a yeah, Borg. A, yeah, I have that's right. <laughs> I um, I did not stir with a knife. I used to cut my lime because my Fuck. lime was already cut. Ooh. Did you I use know. a different knife? I I did use no I ended up using a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first thing I grabbed. <laughs> I kind of forgot about it. So maybe that's why this is too salty. It, it's nice. You just did a big ah there, Jeff, and it is like I do that too, and I'm like, oh, but salt. <laughs> it's like the ah from the coke, and mm. then I don't think the I did enough salt. Then if you guys are tasting brine, well, yeah, I'm getting it big time. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna run out and just dump the rest of my coke in this. Have okay. fun. Um, I didn't use a big pinch of salt, but the salt I used was the big fat, like coarse kosher salt. Yeah. So yeah. I do think that maybe that made it saltier than I realized because those pack a punch. Yeah, you got like pretzel salt hanging around, clanking around. I was afraid they would all like stick to the bottom though. I, I guess it's okay. It's worked in. But whenever they whenever they tell you to put ice on top of like some of the ingredients, I'm always like, you're that stuff's never getting kicked up. I'm just gonna taste them at the last sip. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. I do Michael. like it. I'm liking it. It's interesting. I'm liking it. It's I I yeah. I, I, this, I needed to dilute this a little more. Knee jerk, I do think just well, I don't say I'll save it for final thoughts. My thoughts might evolve. You never know. I'm curious what just tequila and just coke would be. That I feel like the salt is right. throwing me off. But I do like salty stuff, so maybe I'll grow to like it. Maybe just do the rim. That was the original. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Oh, Mike wants to sip selectively. <laughs> That's right. A little of this, a little of that. You could do a little tahine. Would that wouldn't be weird, huh? Not at all. Tahine is like the new thing from what I'm hearing. <laughs> right, <laughs> Tim. They, they, they said that they like that now. <laughs> <laughs> they they being just the internet. <laughs> and have People. you been paying attention during booze news? Yes. So yes. 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 I pay attention. Um, yeah, from the meme. Let me ask you guys this. From the meme. From the meme. The, <laughs> we're having a tequila Coke, right? Yep. yep. Truer oh, words yes. were never spoken, Tim. <laughs> now, let's talk. When I was younger, I didn't hear the word cocktail. Well, I heard the word, but it was always like mixed drinks. So like, do you want beer or you want a mixed drink? You go to party, mm-hmm. mixed drink. Um, so I, I tend to think when it's just blank and blank, you know, like, it's 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 still a cocktail, but if you're thinking in terms of uh, a blank and blank, what's your favorite? You you uh, you, you know uh, uh, yeah tequila Jack soda and of, of, of Jack and Coke rum Jack rum, and Coke is probably the rum and Coke batonga. Yeah. 
Batanga. <laughs> um, I do tequila soda a lot at bars if I'm just trying to, um, like, if I do a marg or something like that, I'll, I'll be like, okay, that was good. Now, enough of the sweet and sour. I'll just do, like, a tequila soda. But if I'm at home, whiskey ginger. Whiskey oh, ginger. You classic. love the ginger. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, I, I should have said, well, it's not, I should have, I should have said a Russian root, but I didn't. Well, that would just be a vodka, uh, you know, you know, if we're doing like whiskey, ginger, um, yeah. gin and vodka tonic, root beer, it'd be a, uh, a vodka root beer. He's uh, optional. <laughs> uh, don't put it on the Spiced ground. Rum and cherry cola. <laughs> yeah, serve, serve from ground because some, I thought she was my friend and she put it on the ground. <laughs> Getting all worked up. <laughs> we should have her on the show. She's, she's a, we should have, uh, uh, Eva Anderson on the show. She's a big cocktaily she she gave me my first uh pd scotch not like a big scotch guy but she gave me the my taste of it i was like this is fucking gross this is like a band-aid and she's like yeah i like it i, was like, you. I remember her wow. handing me a glass and saying taste this it tastes like band-aids <laughs> like she, that's how she's selling it <laughs> yeah she's a, she's a she'll she knows some good we'll get her on stuff. we've had her on in like a cameo form but we'll have her on as a bona fide we, guest we yeah. should have her on to talk about like have her pick a drink because i know she knows like she's a really good cook and baker and stuff. She knows some really cool specific recipes. Old timey, like pr- pre-prohibition yeah. cocktails and shit like that. She made punches. Uh, that's very good. And like infused well, stuff. She does a lot of infusing. We, we should have her make the or uh, do the drink that she put my Russian root on the ground for. Her, her yeah. well made. Oh, yeah. uh, she should bring in the drink, drink make the drink, uh, talk about the drink. Um, put it on the ground. We get to hang out. <laughs> Yeah, we're looking to unload. <laughs> we get to crack wise for once. We and we talked about have we talked about uh, having a guest host, like the three of us take off for a week and having like Neil and Fran come in and host. I think that'd be funny. That'd be great. That's funny if the audience wants it. What if it was power violence? So it was uh, Wit Clay and oh, Bud. That's funny. And they're kind of each being one of us. My fear with with uh, <laughs> they each take one of our uh, personas. <laughs> play one. I'm of. Bud. I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, Eva Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should. No, I'm sorry. What I was going to say is I would be worried that uh, either Neil and Fran or the uh, power violence guys would be better than us at this and people would want to hear them more. Uh, rating sky. Michael. Yeah. <laughs> I could think they're very funny people, so I, I wouldn't want them yeah. to uh, take I'm our. I'm pretty funny <laughs> myself. You know, Ooh. I got an Emmy nomination. Yeah, but not to the level of a Neil and Fran or a Power <laughs> Fans. You're, you're kind of your own. They got more Emmy noms than me. That's true. <laughs> Sloppy boy humor is a little. <laughs> I'm not too into it. Um, but here's a weird thing. My my favorite blank and blank is gin and tonic, but I re- I've never remember to order it. You know, mm. I've never seen you with a tonic of any sort. I've poked through your fridge many times, Tim. Never seen a tonic. I used to have a whole bunch of diet tonic. Ooh, real good. Mm. Real nice. good stuff. With some quinine in there, I bet, huh? <laughs> I say, hey, Schwepp. <laughs> hey, Seagram, go heavy on the quinine. Give me that cue. I was out at a, uh, a Mexican restaurant recently, a couple days ago with my brother and some friends, and we had uh, margaritas. Hadn't had a margarita in a long time. I said, this is so great. This margarita, it's, I always kind of, it's almost like the daiquiri where I'm like, margarita, no, I don't want a big complicated drink. And it's like, oh yeah, margarita is so simple. Not complicated if you order it, somebody else's problem. It just arrives, Mike. No, I know, I know, but I'm, I'm picturing like, a, you know, when we're talking about the daiquiri and I was picturing a big yes. flowery. A flowery thing. affair, yes. It's very simple. I made myself a Cadillac margarita the other day where I, I floated a little Grand Marnier on top. Uh, At the home? Almost. Most delicious, indeed. Hey, we got to do another Di Serrano drink because yeah, I want to get I want to get some of that back in my life. Yep, I been I did a um, what is it Godfather's the rye and the yeah and which the was no the Godfather was the bourbon and mm, right Scotch and amaretto because of the f- Scotch and amaretto that's what it was and then the f- the French, French connection, connection was is cognac rye. and amaretto ah both good. Jeff, were you there at the well when I ordered a, I said, uh, can I have a French connection? And he was like, what? And I, and I knew he wouldn't know that. So, but <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, can I have a, uh, 
uh, a cognac and amaretto on the rocks. And the guy was like, okay. And he came back with two glasses, a, a, a cognac on the rocks and an amaretto on the rocks. And I was like, okay. I mean, I, I was probably going to drink two anyway, so we'll figure this out. But <laughs> you got a nice tumbler full of Godfather. Like I have now have a third glass to put it in. I thought you were going to say, what was it? You went to a movie theater or something and you or tried to order one and they, they came back and were like, that's going to be like $36. <laughs> you don't yes. want that. Oh, it was at MacGuffin's at AMC. <laughs> they were like, they were like, you should buy these separately. <laughs> Do you go to MacGuffin's when you're not seeing a movie? Just to, that's your, uh, yeah, your it's my watering hole. I get out of work, I belly up to the bar. Hey, how kid, are you? I had another rough day, kid. Oh, okay, <laughs> Mr. Galvagas. Well, you want some popcorn? Another rough day. <laughs> I had a rough day of telling those tunes what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I said that in uh, when we did the uh, Neil. Hello, Neil. I know you're listening. I, I recorded a voice with you guys for the next season of Digman. And I I was in the booth and it was like Neil and, and Tim and some other producers and stuff out in the uh, through the window. I was like, Neil, just uh, just so you know, once we get done with it or just so I know, once we get done with this, we're going to you're going to make put this to cartoons or something. <laughs> I felt like you got to laugh. Too. The laugh I was looking for. But I, I hope I didn't offend him. Um, Neil, yeah, no, you, I, I hope I didn't offend you. <laughs> You're going to put this in you the cartoons that, uh, or something? In this studio, you said there was Neil and Tim and some producers and stuff. Did you did you get the sense like you would do a take and then you'd look through the window to them and they would mm. all, everyone would turn to Tim and I yeah. would say, yeah, yeah, that's great. Let's move on. And they'd be like, okay. Right, right. There was even some where he just uh, kind of in a desk chair like this, you'd just, they'd look at you and. Just the smallest just nod. A nod. The just smallest a nod. nod. Yeah. And then remember, mm. you were walking mm. out after the session, and I, I kind of gave you a thumbs up, and it was like, that's huge. He never does that. Yeah. And it was so great because, like, I was like, the guy who gave me a car ride here thumbs up me, and now I'm going to see him in the car on the way home. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Also, the guy who's stuffing his face with snacks more in this and filling his pockets with kind bars before he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> let me, uh, it's good to post my W's, right? Oh, here on the pod? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yes, you have to. Because no one else is going to do it for you. Well, I had a big W at the, um, with the snacks in the Digman studio up at Titmus Pr Productions in the green room. I was looking and I said, look at the candy. And they had Tic Tacs in one pack with all different colors. You know, and, yeah. and I forget what it was, it was like tr a tropical pack with all fruit these adventure, flavors. fruit adventure. They call it. Yes. Fruit adventure. <laughs> and I said, this is fun for me. And I took them and I was eating them. And, I, you know, Tic Tacs are delicious. <laughs> the, the fruit ones. Yeah. You're but just working your way quickly through a whole carton. <laughs> I here's what I did. I'm chewing them <laughs> candy. And I, I start thinking, Tim. You got to guess the flavors, right? And and uh, and I, I, I oh, that's a fun little game for yourself. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty clear. This one, that one. But then there was this one flavor I couldn't place, and I said, "Jesus, Tim, Tim, do you think this could be <laughs> passion fruit?" Yeah, and oh lo God. and behold, I Googled no. it and it was passion fruit. And I <laughs> really? Wow, oh, the palate the on this guy. That's pretty the good palette. for a candy, I'll say. Because yes. candy flavors, we all know, are like wildly They're different fake sometimes. Ass. Than yeah. Nonsense. Yeah. It, could have been, it could have been guava. It could have been uh, dragon fruit. What's the deal yes. with a Tic Tac? You eat a white Tic Tac, that thing takes a while to crunch. Green, same thing. But the orange ones is just like... They turn chewy to food. They, they turn to chew. Delicious. Yeah, yeah just chew. chew them down. Oh, and the fuck. white ones, when you first pop it in your mouth, you're getting a little vanilla. Then you get mm. down into the mint, and it tastes like toothpaste. I wish I could just have that outer coating the whole time. Uh, mm -hmm. mm. Well, you could eat it like a sunflower seed, cat man. You just take one, you go <laughs> get that vanilla off, and yeah, spit them out. <laughs> it's expensive, but I'll try it. Mm -hmm. Jeff had Coca Cola ones coming back to the drink. He had some Coca Cola. Can you uh, believe that? Tic Tacs. Coca Cola did a collab with Tic Tac. I love that. That's they great. were okay. <laughs> they were. They were. They really were okay. okay. <laughs> These are okay. Did it taste real? Like what it was supposed to taste like? Real as the day is long, Tim. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Coca Cola, mm -hmm. I'm due for round two. Hmm. 
Yes. Not me. I'm slow on this. I think I think the uh, the salt is slowing me down. I'm getting down. Yeah, girl, Mike, you don't girl. have enough ice in your glass, Mike. What are you talking about? I got three cubes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I should put maybe a little water. It'll water it down. They're half the melted, salt. though. Look at them. They're pathetic. <laughs> yeah. These are pretty fucking second string, huh? Would you change anything for round two? Mike, I know you already did a tweak in round one, which is not normally what we do here on the pod, but what I do? You added Coke. Did you not? I added Coke. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I added Coke to it just to, because I think I added too much salt. Mm. So you're getting a lot of iterations here. Yeah, I'm getting all pod. types of ones. I never really, one doesn't start and then they kind of start again mm. before they end. Yeah, it's a pretty groovy scene over here. For me, more lime, more lime. Lime freak. I'm going to do the Don Javier method to the, to a T. I'm going to rim my glass with salt. The pinch is not going in there. And then I'm going to do a lot of tequila and a splash of Coke up top. I'm in the mood to get a little drunk and to be on the sloppy boys blow. And I, I want to be like slurring and steamrolling you guys. So mm -hmm, I'm going to make a really stiff one. Great. Isn't it funny? Isn't it a funny feeling when you're like, I'm going to get drunk right now. When you make yeah. a concerted effort, when you're like, you kind of think about your day, like say it's like a Saturday afternoon, you're like, you know what? I got nothing to do tonight. I can start drinking right now. <laughs> well, a lot of times the drunkenness uh, insists upon itself. It's, it sort of sneaks in. So it's yeah. nice sometimes to just get ahead of it and be like, you know what? I choose you. Yeah, I know what you're up to. I and choose, I'm already on it. I have agency in this relationship. <laughs> For me, it's always a re reaction to that first sip. Like, I, it hits me different any day. Like sometimes you have a sip and it just makes you tired or grumpy or weird. Mm -hmm. And then other times it's like, Ooh, Timmy, it's one of those days. You know, sometimes I see you, Tim, and you go, let's go. Let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah, is this one of those nights? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to get drunk because when we're done recording pods, I'm going to, take out my guitar and I'm going to rehearse some sloppy boys songs for our tour. So oh, I want to get oh. nice and loose for that because I'm always loose. drunk on stage. So I should be drunk when I practice. You want to rehearse in the state that you're going to be in when you perform. Yes. yes. Exactly. All right. 10 so shots folks. of fireball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, folks, why don't you open up your ears and open up your wallets? Cause here comes the ads and your hearts and, and your hearts. Don't forget your hearts. And we'll be right back here after these messages. Batonga round two. How'd it go, Timmy? You did the Deluxo edition, the, the, the drunkard edition? Yep. My, my, my salt went only on the rim, not mm. into the drink. Um, and then I went about <laughs> almost like two thirds tequila and then splash of Coke up top. Damn. I didn't do quite that much, but I had one of those fiascos happen where you, you get all the ice in there, right? Then you dump in the spirit and it hits the ice just so where it slingshots right back out of the glass. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know how much went in. So I'll just dump in a bunch more tequila. I, hate and I wanted more. a nice full glass. So I topped it up. And I think I think I just did sort of like a freestyle. That happens to me every time I clean my jigger for my uh, my cocktail making. Ooh. I put it right under the uh, spout or the faucet and it goes zoop and it <laughs> comes back and it's Or me. like an ice cube tray if you're not paying attention. Those, yeah, things, yeah. Are, those things are... Those like, that's a fly. A, a fiasco. Lupe fiasco. <laughs> Kick push. <laughs> Michael, what'd you do for your drink? I was still, I'm more, still working on my next one. I added more ice. I, I'm still working on my first. Oh, okay. Say. Gotcha. Ooh. I was like, who's this working great. on the tig? <laughs> less, <laughs> less salty. I caught a little bit from the rim, but not as much as before. The other one was too salty. My fault. This mm -hmm. one is perfect. Too salty. Too my salty. Fault. My fault. God, fucking damn it. I, I, <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. It's that. It's that lag. It's that internet lag. Wait, wait, wait. Explain that joke that you both made at the same time. Too salty, <laughs> my fault. What? Too salty, Too salty my, my faulty. faulty. <laughs> Too salty, my faulty. Yes. yes, yes. Jeff was about to say the lie, but he realized I he, snaked he him and scooped me. Yeah. yeah, scooped him. Damn, I've been scooped. Um, this is really good. More lime juice is like the the one thing I, I made a concerted effort to just pile in there is lime juice. Ooh, I would do that. Now, mm. this is where I would love to mm -hmm. be at a Coke freestyle machine. 
usually this I, is where I would like this to be. This is where I'd like to fly. <laughs> it's I, times I like this sure. in life. Many times. Mm-hmm. Useless. Useless. I'm, I'm angered that that's the, the, the option. You get it. Yeah. A, a lime Coke in here. Ooh, this is going to get me nice and fired up to tear Beyonce a new asshole on the blowout. <gasps> Jeff. Uh-oh. What? I can't tease? Jeff, this is exciting. What's Jeff going to say in the new... And who cares what he has to say about the new fucking Smash <laughs> Beyonce album? No, no, everyone does. They should They should sign up for the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> they should sign up for the Patreon. This is stuff people need to know. I'm hmm. worried that Jeff's going to ruin Beyonce's finances when he comes out mm-hmm, against her mm-hmm. new album. I know. But Jeff, don't... I mean... Say what you think, but don't go in. Don't go hard because this is <laughs> yeah. a f- she's got a family. Yeah, you're right. Okay. You could ruin them. <laughs> you could ruin the Carters. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, ruin the Carters. Final thoughts. We want to get into it? Shall we? Mm-hmm. Should we wrap it up? I, my final thought on this is I would like to try this again with no salt at all. <gasps> because I think the tequila is doing a lot of the salty weight for me. They're like the flavor. Wait for me. The salty wait. And I think I. I, I don't know what I'm interesting. saying. Interesting. You don't want the salt. Just say you don't want the salt. I don't want the salt. Uh, I know this is an order again for me. I, I do like it, and I want to. I want to have it again. Hmm. Timothy, your thoughts. Submit them. I have to agree. It's an order again. I like it. I'm a Paloma guy, and I love just not even a fancy Paloma, just tequila and squirt salt lime, and I like Palomas better but it's fun to have this whole different flavor it does it's different i've never had anything like this and uh yeah i could see myself selling down this spring i could see myself settling down with this drink (laughs) no like just just for variety i do think i will order this Uh, i think my most popular blank and blank order on tour i get a lot of uh I get a vodka soda, but I say, can I get a vodka soda in a pint glass with a lot of soda? And so that it's um, ah, that's yeah. good. hydrating. But like I do spritzer. think I'm going to order these yeah. like, like a spritzer. <laughs> um, I think that this is worth uh, having a seat at the table. It's different. Mm-hmm. I really like it. Um, and here's what I'm also thinking is this is a very stiff version and it's delicious, but I would you know, sometimes like a little bit of rum or a little bit of whiskey and a lot of Coke is kind of nice. What about a version of this that's ranch water style popo no no? <gasps> yes, yes. Go to a bodega, mm. get a Mexican Coke and a nip yes. of tequila. Take mm. one gulp of the Coke, pour the nip in there, walk it around the streets of New York. Popo <laughs> no no, baby. <laughs> popo no no. And you go up to the, you go up to the cop and you say. Oh, yeah, I'm just drinking this. <laughs> nothing wrong He's with like, this. Okay, well, you're, you don't know. You smell nothing. like tequila. You're arrested, you <laughs> <Yeah>. asshole. <laughs> you can't shove me. That's for sure. <laughs> um, speaking of that type of thing, my yeah. whole Twitter feed, X feed. I, I guess I clicked on some effed up videos, but now when I when I open up the X app, my yeah. o- the only thing I see is like. Watch this bully messes with this kid, but then this, this kid kills yeah, this bully, this, and then it's like I, I know this, this kid. This kid messes with his adult, and then the adult body slams the kid, and this <sighs> cop gets shot, and this cop shoots somebody. I'm like, what I the know, fuck? I know. Yeah. It's that. It's that for you. I mean, I had this too. I was like, how? I'm not following any of these people, and then I realized the front page of Twitter or, or, or X. There's following. Right. right up top and for you my following they took that from tiktok yeah yeah oh. my, my following delightful all my friends posting jokes posting political stuff whatever the for you is all like fights and like accidental murders and shit is now is it like that because of our algorithms because we're dastardly dudes or do you think everyone is seeing effed up surveillance videos all the time i don't know i'm looking at my, i'm gonna look at my twitter right now and see what i see like three people die every day when i open my phone I know it's the it's worst, intense, and I wish like, they lived. Well, yeah, you, 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 people, full of love, people, love. full of life, and full of love. <laughs> people, love people, yeah, <laughs> people of people, indeed. Um, I think it is everybody, but there is that thing that when you do click through with morbid curiosity, look, I do like to see a bully get punched in the face sometimes. Yep. I don't like to see somebody accidentally fall down an elevator shaft. That's exactly. not fun for me. I, I like comeuppance and I like redemptive tales. Sometimes it's like, watch this bad person do something awful to a good person or 
Like, like there's one I've seen a lot where it's just like a guy's walking through, walking in the subway and just punching people in the face. Like old ladies are getting punched in the face. I'm like, I don't want to see Yes. That. What the fuck is that? Also, that's like a thing that's happening now. Like, like a guy in New York is punching specifically women in the face. What the I don't fuck like is that. this? Is it one, like, is that a person, like one person or is this like a rash of stuff happening? I don't know. Maybe it's one guy. Maybe. I feel like that, I feel like that comes up all the time. It's like, oh, watch out. Don't go to Detroit because they're punching people in the face in Detroit now. Or don't go uh, to Denver. It's Denver's getting punched in the face. When somebody really gets rocked, there's that yeah. half second where like a human body just looks like a piece of matter and it's uh, really hard to witness, you know, yeah. a, a yeah. lot of them hit the floor and then they're okay after a second. But in that one moment when you see a whole being with a whole life and a mother and father and they just are a piece of matter flopping, just a yeah. piece yeah. of meat. And look, some people can take it. If you see us walking down the street and we get punched in the face, that's Fuck fine. We yeah. can. No, 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 no. I'm going to amend that. Don't touch me or talk to me on the street. Certain people, we can take it, but other people, they can't take that. <laughs> they can't Don't take touch that. me, talk, talk to me, look at me, think about me, or uh, be on the street when I'm on the street. Well, think about us. Think, think about subscribing. <laughs> Yes, only think about that aspect of me. <laughs> the, the, the part of me that only is reachable through a subscription. <laughs> the part of me that is behind a paywall, you are free to think about. Yes, think okay. about it. My final thoughts, real quick, if I could fucking talk for a second. Yes, 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 yes. This is a great drink, but is tequila better used in a Paloma? I think so. Is Coke better used in a Cuba Libre? I think so. Oh, interesting. But it's, hey, sometimes you want to get a little freaky and you want to mix things yeah. up a little bit. This is like, this does taste like a party drink. It's already got me sort of motor mouth in it, and I'm ready to trash Beyonce. Yeah. So I think you do try this, and it is an order again. How about that? Jeff, yeah. can I pitch you an idea? I listened to an episode of Cocktail College about the Batanga, and mm. these guys are experts. They know their shit. And here's what they're saying. Oh, wow. In America... Bottle service culture is like, oh my God, I'm in a club and it's like $500 for a bottle. And blah, blah, blah. In Mexico, mm -hmm. that's not the case. It's more like, like here, if you're at a restaurant, you have a bottle of wine. If you're both going to have wine, it just makes sense to just like get the bottle. Um, they're saying in Mexico, it's very common to be like, oh, we'll have a bottle of tequila for the table and we'll get a couple of mixers. So you have like, you have a, a, a bottle of Coke, a bottle of Topo Chico, a bottle of Squirt. Cool. And everyone's making their own little highballs at the table. Cool. Imagine that. Next time you have a party or, or just an intimate gathering in your home, put the tequila <laughs> bottle out there and then a few soft drinks and see who goes for the Coke. See who goes for the Topo. That's see great. Who goes for you, the squirt. you sit back behind a two-way mirror and you take notes of your friends. And you go, and you see. <laughs> just as <Yeah>. I suspected. <laughs> <laughs> they're like where has Jeff been all night we hear him giggling through that mirror <laughs> through that through that mirror <laughs> that huge mirror through that large conspicuous mirror just as I suspected <laughs> <laughs> my calculations were correct <laughs> you're just looking in a mirror at them <laughs> oh Timothy aren't you full of surprises <laughs> yeah Jeff I can hear you just as I suspected all my friends left <laughs> I left for two <laughs> seconds and they're all gone. <laughs> and they took the tequila. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show. Follow us on social media at the Sloppy Boys, where you can re where we release these recipes ahead of time. <laughs> oh batanga. boy, that's a batanga talk. That's a batanga. And if you can't get enough boys, go to Patreon.com/slash the Sloppy Boys, and that's where you get the blowout. That's where you get questions for Lennon. And that's where you get access to the Discord where you can chat with us at the live stream post-party Q&A. Mm -hmm. Pretty good deal if you ask me. These are all great. These are all great great things you should be doing. Can I share something really quick? Because it just hit me and I got to say it. If it's Ooh, personal. Nice. It's personal. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, so the word Batanga... <laughs> Yes. Has been, is really familiar to me and it finally hit me where it's from. Mm. There, there was a toy when we were ki kids. A what? That was like, toy. it was like a, a Nerf sword. Toy, toy, or toy. A toy. So it was like a Nerf, like a, like a sword or something, but it was soft and foamy and you could hit each other with this soft foamy oh. sword. And I remember when I was a kid, 
uh, my babysitter was babysitting me and my brother and classic her boyfriend came over and mm. uh, we were like oh rick's here and then he he was like <laughs> beating the shit out of us with these batangas and we we're like <laughs> rick anyway, <laughs> we love batanga. you rick that's what they were called batangas i i'm calling them oh interesting bata- but but it wouldn't I thought, be I thought they canoe. sounded like that or something I like that name, Batanga. It sounds like a real, like, battle cry. Batanga! You know what it reminds me of? I was like, what does it sound like? Morongo? No, it sounds like Pachanga Casino and Resort. Pachanga. 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 Okay, so Batanga means thick in the middle. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Damn. (laughs) Okay. That... So that's why that guy. Oh, that makes sense for canoe because a canoe is like. That makes sense for your babysitter's boyfriend. Damn. (laughs) 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your, your boyfriend your boyfriend's thick yeah girthy boy um we should do like a, a pachanga or morongo getaway sometime like yeah oh you yeah know, like, like stay down there for a weekend i'm sure they probably get a lot oh i don't know maybe it's not true but some like ironic stays where a bunch of like just like a collection of friends is like we don't want to do vegas but like we could right. probably live it up in pachanga yeah I, I There's a lot think of, about it. Uh, <laughs> I don't need to think about it. <laughs> I love it. Where's Where's the one by the outlets when you're heading out to? Um, that's Morongo, I think. Okay, Morongo, <laughs> right? There's also one down by San Diego that's like Yamava, and then there Ooh. there's there's uh, that Bugaboo Creek. There's Is a, that something? That's a Canadian. That's, <laughs> that's a, yeah, we talked about a Canadian that. themed <laughs> chain restaurant, but yeah. <laughs> We talked about that during the months. I go there too. Oh. <laughs> I do want to do it out back. It's a good time, actually. isn't it? <laughs> After uh, last week, we were talking about TGI Fridays, and I was looking to see if there's one in the area. And all the close TGI Fridays are just like mall locations, but there's one in West Covina that's like an '80s TGI Friday. <laughs> Dude, we, yeah, just the, I don't. I've never been to West Covina. I hear it advertised, and it sounds like exactly the sort of place that would have a throwbacky TGI it's Friday. Forgotten <laughs> by time. They're still uh, serving food that was <laughs> that was prepped in the '80s. <laughs> <laughs> well, good episode, guys, and good episode those of you listening at home. You um, did a good good work to all of us. We'll see you back here next week, and uh, tell a friend, why don't you? Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Later. Bye. <laughs> 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 Peter. <laughs> <laughs>